Thank you, Harriet. Good morning. Nice to have you here. A couple of quick announcements as we get started this morning. Uh, in your bulletin, you have a, a flyer about the Magic of Bronze concert that's coming up in uh, November. Uh, tickets will be on sale next week for that. Also, uh, the week before that, on the 12th of November, uh, we have a, another one of our shredding events where they bring the shredding truck in and we do the shredding. Uh, if you have not yet uh, provided a basket, uh, I don't see candy here. Uh, but anyway, if you've not yet provided a basket... Oh, there, you, you changed sides on me. Uh, okay. If you've not yet provided a basket for the auction for our baby diaper program, uh, you can do that, and gift cards, and we're also looking for scratch-off lottery tickets. Uh, there's a bullet flyer in there for that. Also, the flyer in your bulletin tells you the names and addresses and phone numbers of our new members that were received into membership last week. <clears throat> we continue today to receive funds for the uh, Hurricane Ian uh, uh, Relief Fund, and if you would like to donate to that, make sure you mark on your, on your uh, check accordingly. Um, Mary asked me to remind you that you don't need to write a, check, a separate check for everything. You just write one check and put in the memo uh, where the various amounts on that check uh, need to go, and they'll take care of it uh, when they do the accounting. Also, uh, the mission for this month, all our mission monies that we collect will go to the Salvation Army in Leesburg. Uh, we help every year to provide a uh, Thanksgiving dinner uh, for those who uh, need help. They not only provide an on-site dinner, but they also provide uh, families with uh, dinners to take home and prepare at home. So uh, your generous support will help us to be able to do that again. Uh, the alder flowers this morning are given by uh, Jan Doran in celebration of her sisters, uh, Eileen and Lois, and uh, all the love that they have given to her. And the centerpiece is there in honor of uh, Pam Sabo's birthday, given by Danny. Happy birthday. I know it's not yet, but it's coming. Today's to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pam. Happy birthday to you. And I, I know it's some anniversary of your 39th birthday, but we won't go into the specifics. You're welcome. You're welcome. Happy birthday to you. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, we want to remind you that uh, we're getting into the holiday season, so the, the uh, board meetings that will take place this uh, week, our trustee meeting on Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and our uh, mission board meeting at 1 on Thursday and our uh, deacon board meeting on Thursday at 3 o'clock. All those are very important meetings because we'll be laying out the groundwork for what happens in the next couple of months. So uh, uh, if you are available, we hope that you'll uh, take the responsibility seriously and, and be with us. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, beautiful flute music this morning. Uh, Linda, you've not been here before, have you? You were here one more, one time, one time, that's right, okay, I remember now. And uh, Linda Stromsky is here with us, and Billy, of course, with uh, leading our, our hymns, and uh, Doug Moe is here to read our scriptures. So uh, I think we're all here, and we're all ready to go, so uh, we'll hear the prelude by, oh, Penn, Penn State didn't play this, this week, so we can't say we do have a happy announcement. I think we mentioned a week or so ago that there was a possibility that uh, Kevin's son, Ryan, uh, was up for music director of Disneyland in California. That's, that's a big deal, huh? And, and we can say we knew him when because he usually plays for us at Christmas time when he's in visiting dad. And we've had some beautiful concert music with him and uh, just a great guy. And uh, this week we found out, do you have a song? K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, -E, yes, indeed. You don't get that in the big churches. But anyway, uh, we wanted you to know that uh, Ryan O'Neill is now the music director. The what? O'Connell. Did I say O'Neill? <laughs> Sorry. He's good, but he's not that good. But anyway... <laughs> Ryan O'Connell is now the uh, uh, music director at Disneyland in California. So, 
And I guess he's also working with uh, Terry, Hatcher. Terry Hatcher on some kind of a project. And he got uh, birthday balloons from Terry Hatcher last time. He did really? Oh my gosh. It's true. It's, a, it's, it's true, huh? Yeah, that's pretty good. He's in the big time now. Uh, so, someday, someday when he grows up and he really gets good, he'll be playing at Mezzaluna. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin O'Connell. This is. Well, I know, but she jumped right up. Perhaps I'll do it.
This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We worship him together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Come, let us go to the house of God. Come, let us worship together. Linda. Thank you, Kevin. Let us pray together. O God, who created the world and loves the world, you have called us out of the world for this time of worship. We worship you as our sovereign, offering our praise just for who you are. As we worship, we seek to reconnect with you if the world has distracted us. We seek serenity if the world has made us anxious. We seek to find a spiritual center if the world has pushed us to the edge. As we worship this day, O oh God, prepare us to go back into the world, ready to display your grace and transforming love. Amen.
the stars in space. It took a miracle to hang the world in place. But when we say Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. God, we are aware of the state of the world and our part in it. We watch the news with little surprise at the violence and destruction that arise every day. We confess that if we are not part of the solution, we are part of the problem. Grant us the will to make a difference in our corners of the world so that we might be a light in the darkness as the representatives of your light. Amen. It is time, it is a time of change. May we be agents of change as a forgiven people living in the promises of God's love. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a beautiful day you've made. And in this beautiful day, we realize that there are those who, in our own state, are still struggling, waddling through floodwaters and trying to gather up what little is left of their belongings, trying to find something to eat, clean water to drink. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to open the hearts of people to help to make a, an easier way, to provide a way to getting things back to some sense of normalcy again. We know that it doesn't take a hurricane to make life tough. It doesn't take a great storm, a wind or storm surge to, to make it difficult to face another day. But somehow or another, this accentuates it all for us. It, it reminds us of just how difficult life can become and is. And so we pray. We pray and we open our hearts and we open our wallets and we, we open our efforts to try to bring back that which has been lost. What the devil meant for ill, allow your holy angels and your holy spirit
to bring about good. Father, we also pray today for those that are part of our church family who are going through difficult times. We pray for Jesse Edwards, and she now is in the rehab center trying to <clears throat> regain her strength. And those rehab sessions are tough, and you need to be with her, and we need to continue to pray for her. We pray for Rick Nelly, who just came home from the hospital yesterday, but still has some distance to go in regaining his strength and being able to get back to his routine again. We pray for all those who are on our hearts and minds today who just need you to infuse them with your power and strength. Life is, is difficult and tough, and sometimes the, the sicknesses and the unexpected challenges are a little bit more than we can bear. Be with us, Father. You know the pain. Your son knew the pain on the cross. Your holy disciples and apostles understood the pain as each one of them gave their lives for their faith. So help us to be willing to sacrifice and to do whatever needs to be done to make life better for one another and for those that you love. We pray all these things in the name of your son who taught us to say when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're about to take the offering, but before we do, I wanted to point something out to you. How many of you have spell check on your computer? All of you, yeah. Well, you'll notice that uh, as the deer is not D-E-A-R, it's D-E-E-R, D-E-E-R. And uh, spell check made it D-E-A-R. So before five of you come up to me at the end of the service and tell me I made an error, I realize that. No, 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 no. No, I said that my, my uh, proofreader didn't see it either, so. <laughs> yeah. Always blame poor Dawn. Yeah. All right, let's all together. Ah, okay, that's good. So if, if, you don't want, if you don't want errors in the bulletin next week, a larger offering would help. <laughs> That's not true. Wait upon the, ush the ushers will now wait upon you for the receiving of our morning tithes and offerings.
gracious Heavenly Father, to your throne of grace, we bring these our gifts, asking that you would use them in the furtherance of your kingdom, that love might reign, that healing might come, that people might join together before you. But we pray these things in your name and for your sake. Amen. Well, now that you all sat down, could you all stand back up? Scripture reading is from the New Testament, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, my sufferings, what befell me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured. Yet from them all, the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceivers and deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 
May God bless this reading of his holy word. The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now sometimes we get this idea in our head that I just want to see your smiling faces. <laughs> Actually, I want to make sure you didn't fall asleep. <laughs> Sometimes we get this idea in our head that uh, being a Christian means that everything's supposed to go just easy, hunky-dory, no problems. We're not going to have any issues in our lives. Uh, if something goes wrong, we just snap our fingers and it, it goes away. I don't know where we get the idea because the scripture does not in any corner of God's word give us that kind of a picture. Even before Christ landed on earth and was born in Bethlehem, we see the Old Testament story being one issue after another, one challenge after another. We went from fiery furnaces to dealing with giants to facing lions to having floods. All sorts of issues came upon God's people as those formative years were taking place in the history of the scriptural accounts. If the Christian life is not presenting itself to us as a challenge, it seems like maybe something's gone wrong. I remember when Mike Howard, who moved back up to Michigan, was here and uh, used to come to board meetings and he'd volunteer doing all sorts of things for the infant toddler pantry. He had one of these favorite pet sayings and I'd say to him, how's it going, Mike? He'd always say, challenges and opportunities, challenges and opportunities. And that's what life is. It's just a string of challenges and opportunities. Some people's challenges seem greater than others. Some people's opportunities seem to be beyond what they deserve or should get. But life is a, a string of challenges and opportunities. Another friend of mine once said, if things go along too smoothly, then I get a little worried. 
And isn't that the truth? We go through all these times where maybe for a month or two or three, things seem to be okay. We don't get sick. We are able to pay our bills. Uh, nobody calls us up and tells us of some disaster that's befallen a family member. Everything seems all right. And when that happens, don't you get a little nervous? You know, it's been a while. It's been a while. And then they have these old sayings that people throw at us like, deaths come in threes. Did you ever hear that one? Deaths come in threes. So when two people die, don't you get a little nervous that you could be next? What is that all about? We, it's like we almost look forward to the next disaster. We need to be aware that Christianity, Christian faith, personal spirituality, whatever you call your faith walk, my relationship with Jesus, is filled with subtle dangers, major catastrophes, all sorts of problems. I was telling somebody this morning when they were asking me how people were doing uh, that have been going through some tough times in the congregation, I said, you know, it's, it's strange how we can go for three or four months where I have not been to the hospital to see anybody because nobody's sick. Out of 250 people that we take care of, everybody's doing fine. That's good. That's real good. But then all of a sudden, I'm at the hospital every day and sometimes there's three or four people there. And on the way home from the hospital, you get to stop at the nursing home or the rehab center. And then when you get back to the office, you make three or four phone calls checking up on people who just got out of the rehab center. And then another period of calm. It's like waves, sort of like grief. You know, when you lose a loved one and uh, uh, it, it, it hits you like a tidal wave, like a tsunami, like a, a storm surge. When the event happens... And you just don't know how you're going to face the next day. And gradually it seems like the water subsides. Gradually it seems like it, it backs off a little bit. And then something happens, a memory comes, or an event happens that triggers it, and it, it comes back again. And it never really goes away entirely. Somehow or another, that happens over and over again. It's just further and further apart are the waves and the problems. I wonder if that's not God's plan to keep us tough, to keep us strong, to keep us ready for, for whatever might befall us. I believe that's why those stories are there in the scripture, why those accounts are there, all those historical events where people face challenges, so that those who read them would know it's not going to be easy. And if you're expecting it to be easy, or you think you're entitled to it being easy, or that you deserve it to be easy, you are among all men and women most foolish. You know, I remember when I was a kid, we used to have a guy come by every Saturday morning, I believe, in the milk truck. And we had a milkman. We had a bread man, and we had a huckster who came by with a, a vegetable truck. And they did door-to-door. -door. You know, this is before the pandemic and before they started making home deliveries. This is not a new idea. Well, anyway, when the milkman would come by, we had a, a metal box on the back porch. It was insulated inside, and the outside was metal, and it had the name of the St. Lawrence Dairy on the outside, stencil on the outside. And he'd come up on the back porch, and you could hear the bottles rang, rattling. We had real bottles then. Boy, am I old. And he put the bottles in there. And if you put a, a note in, you could get butter or you could get chocolate milk. I used to like when we get chocolate milk. And uh, then he'd close the lid and that would stay cool. It would stay good for a couple of hours until you came out and got your milk out of the box. Those were the good old days. Those were the good old days. I read a story not too long ago about a milk company that had an old truck back then, and on the sides of the truck they painted a slogan, and the slogan said, our cows are not contented. And underneath it said, they're anxious to do better. <laughs> so I, I think that uh, we ought to be not contented, not satisfied when things seem to be going well, but we need to be anxious to do better when things are not going so well. 
when people are hurting like they are right now in various places across the state, down in Kissimmee, down along the shores of uh, uh, the uh, Gulf Coast of Florida. I mean, if you, if you watch those things on the news, it just breaks your heart. Yeah, that storm... 40 or 50 miles up the coast, coming into Tampa or a little north of Tampa and coming across, some of those scenes could be us. Some of those things happening could be happening to you and I. Our houses could maybe have two foot of water in them and all of our belongings and treasures and so forth could be gone. And then you could go to bed at night worrying about it happening again and having bad dreams about it and wondering what to do next. It's true that our spiritual lives are just like that. It's just where the event happens and to who it happens and, and how severe it is. It seems like a, almost like a gamble life. But no matter what happens in your life, no matter who passes away, no matter what befalls you in your own personal health, no matter what takes place in your finances. We are assured in God's word that he will get us through. We are not assured we're not going to have a problem. We are never promised it's not going to be tough. I mean, the followers of Jesus in the early church did not have an easy time. When we were in Rome, we went to the Colosseum and we saw the place where they'd put the Christians out there and the lions out there and they'd battle it out with these beasts. Or they'd go to war against people with swords and spears and shields with, with their sticks and die on the field of the Colosseum as entertainment for the rich. Life is, is not fair it's sometimes tough, but here's the deal. It's always, always beautiful. Even in the tough times, somebody rises up to hold our hand. Somebody rises up to wrap their arms around us and love us through. It shouldn't be easy. We're not looking for somebody to just give us an easy ride. We're, we're looking for somebody to stand beside us. Somebody to love us through. When we were going through those counseling courses in seminary and going down to the hospital in Lancaster and writing out verbatims and sitting and talking to people, the, the one thing that is a, is a constant is you're never going to know what to say. There is no one who can teach you the counseling methods or the psychology or, or all the stuff that's going to reach every kind of situation. But the one constant in every kind of dilemma that you're going to face as a friend, as a parent, as a grandparent, as a pastor, as a teacher, the one constant is that if you're there, if you hold a hand, if you take the time, you've done a world of good. You've calmed the, the troubled sea, you've slowed down the flow of the pain. You've been there. You've helped. You've made it possible. I'm not saying that you would ever want a world in which everything went right. How boring would that be? I remember when we used to go fishing up in Pennsylvania, there was a place called the Topahawken Creek in Berks County, and it was the most boring stream you'd ever want to see in your life. There were no riffles. There, it, it was fairly difficult to see that the water was even flowing. Just slowly meandered down. And if you stopped and you listened, you didn't hear a thing. Nothing. You didn't hear water rippling. You didn't hear anything. It just flowed on down through. And the only fish that were in that stream were carp. Ugh. And you don't want to eat those bottom feeders, I'll tell you. They, ate the, they fed on some nasty stuff on the bottom of that stream. But if you went trout fishing, if you went to the Manitoni or you went up north where Don used to, grew up in, and there was a beautiful stream called the Makantanga, you went to those streams, there were rocks and the water came down through the, the, 
the grades over those rocks and, and made riffles and bubbled. And, and when you listened, it was like music. It was like music. It was the most beautiful sound. And you could sit there on that stream with your fishing rod and not even put the hook in the water and just listen to that sound. It would almost put you to sleep. It was such a, a peaceful sound, such a, and in some ways also a powerful sound. It was a, an amazing thing. But the water had to flow over those rocks to make that sound. The water had to have some speed to it and it had to, it had to hit those rocks and, and sometimes when there was a lot of water it made more noise and when there was a little bit of water it made less noise but it always had this musical sound. I have this app on my phone called Calm. I know you think I should listen to it more. But sometimes at night, you know, a lot of you have heard me say this in a meeting. I, I, I was laying in bed last night and I thought of this because my mind doesn't stop. And uh, so sometimes it's hard to get to sleep. So I, I saw this thing on television and I got the app on my phone. It's called Calm. And, and you have all these choices. Some are little stories or vignettes. And, uh, but, but what I like best and what I use a lot is, is the sounds and my favorite said they have rain, they have storms, they have a mountain stream, they have a brook going over rocks. And that's where this little diatribe comes from. And I, I turn that on at night and I listen to that side of my, on my nightstand, and I, I listen to that sound of that flowing stream flowing over those rocks and bubbling. And after I get done flashing back to fishing spots and mountain streams and places I've been. I just listen to that sound of that water, which is the river of life. Jesus said that he was the spring of life. And I listen to that and, and before I know it, it's morning. And the stream's still flowing. The sound is still going. It's a great little, it's a great little app. But it takes that water running over those rocks to make it work. And it takes life running over the rocks that you've faced in your life. The death of a loved one, the death of a spouse, the death of a child, a sickness, a pandemic uh, uh, upsurge in your family, running into a financially hard time, losing a job. Those are the rocks of life. It even takes that in the church. Wouldn't it be boring if everything just went well? I'd like to try it sometime. <laughs> but it would be. It would be just boring. It wouldn't make us tough. It wouldn't make us strong. We wouldn't know how to face the tough times if everything went right. There's an old hymn that says, if I'd never had a problem, I'd never know that he could solve them. And isn't that the truth? So all of us have gone through the, the difficulties and, and the hard times. None of us would really be happy if life was just a smooth running Tulpahocken Creek. In reality, we need a little bit of bubble. We need a little bit of tumble. We need a little bit of an impediment to run our water of life against. And if we'll listen, if we'll listen, there's a, a joyful sound. A joyful sound to it all. The psalmist once wrote, Looking back, it seems to me all the grief which had to be left me. What, let me start over. Looking back, it seems to me all the grief which had to be left me when pain was o'er was richer than I'd been before. In other words, the, the sound of life, the, the tenor of life, the, the power of life, is much better, much sweeter, because of the challenges and the opportunities of life. So no matter what you're going through or how hard life may be for you at this very moment or in these days in which we live, know that someday it will be the echo of a good time, of a time where God pulled you out, where God made it better. My favorite psalm is Psalm 30, and the psalmist wrote, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
So whether you're sick, whether you've gone through a relationship problem, whether you've lost a job, no matter what has happened to you or where you've been or what you're going through, listen to the flowing stream. Listen to the bubbling. When you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning, the stream will still flow, but joy, joy comes in the morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you get us through, that you make us overcomers, that you allow us to win the victory. One day, one day it shall pass. One day we shall rise above. One day we will stand on the mountaintop with your son. One day the sickness will be gone. One day we'll have a new body. One day we'll be in that place which he has prepared for us. One day we'll see all those who have been taken from us restored and we'll be with them again. For all that you have done, we are grateful. And for all that you are yet to do, we look forward with great expectancy. In Jesus' name, amen. words on the screens, but I know many of you know this, so sing along with me. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you. Always do Till the blue skies chase the dark clouds far away So will you please say hello to the folks that I know Tell them I won't be long They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go I was singing this song We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Thank you, Harriet. As I close, I'd just like you to know that while I'm preaching, Kevin never stops thinking. So you know when I told you that little quote off the milk truck, right? Well, Kevin remembered one too. It says, you can, you can whip our cream, but you can't beat our milk. My hometown. Uh-huh. My hometown. Your hometown. Thank you, Kevin. I should start consulting you for little quips. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for watching.
the flute. Yeah, oh my. I used to love when Dawn was still with us. You know. She had to move to Texas, though. Hi there. I would. Oh, she was great. Yeah. You did a good job decorating this place. Oh, thank you. I appreciate great. hearing that. Thank you. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks. Mom. We missed you. Thanks. How you doing? Good, good. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. How you doing, young fella? Welcome back to Mary's be my mother's house. We used to have one in box. The milk box? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. Hi there. Next time, bowling will be better. I put a pair of bag of peanut butter cups. Are you the guy? Uh, <laughs> thank you. Hi there. Hi there. Well, that water running over those rocks don't make you want to pee. I thought of that, too, when I was going. I thought, I'm not bringing that up. nurse, right? Honestly, I was what I was.